Good morning, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Hello, happy Saturday. Saturday morning here in Minnesota. I realize if you're catching this from another country, it might actually be tomorrow already or actually probably late at night on Saturday. So I uh, hope you can tune in here. It is, uh, hey, Judy from Ontario, Canada. Yay, somebody's here with me. Thanks for joining me today so we can craft together. Uh, my name is Susan Campfield of SueStampfield.com and you are on my YouTube channel or maybe you're watching the replay uh, over in my Sue Stampfield Facebook group. I invite all of you to join my Facebook group. We have a lot of fun over there. And um, right now we're having, a, I posted a survey this morning about when people do their Christmas cards because today we're doing some more Christmas in July. It is warm here in Minnesota. Uh, hi, Helen from Michigan. Is it warm in Michigan too? I know parts of the country are even warmer than we are. Let me see. I think our high today is um, 90 is our high today. Uh, it's 77 right now, but very humid, very sticky. Um, so what better time to think Christmas and, you know, when it's hot and yucky outside, I like to sit in the air conditioning and do some crafting and today I'm really going to cool down with doing a little bit of uh, snow and uh, pines and so forth. So, oh, it's raining in Ontario. Okay, we had a big storm go through last night, uh, but it's sunny here right now. So thanks for tuning in. We're going to um, let me flip over here to my uh, other camera. Let's see how that looks. Nope, that's not the one I want. That's not the one I want. <laughs> oh, so much fun with new software, right? This is the one I want. And let's uh, see if that's a little better light lighting. I just turned on another light. It's got a little bit of a blue cast, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm super picky about colors <laughs> because of what I do, right? So today we are going to play with um, some shimmer vellum. If I tilt it there, I think you can see the shimmer. I've got two colors here. Um, this one is, oh, is that the right color? Hang on, hang on. Houston, we've got a problem. So I just pulled this out that I cut before I started. Guess what, that's the wrong color. This is mint macaron, which actually looks quite nice with soft succulent, but it was not what I had in mind. So let's grab the right color. which is soft succulent. Sorry about that. I, um, I organize my colors by rainbow and sometimes I grab the wrong one, but I do like organizing by rainbow because it helps me, uh, helps me when it comes to creating. So um, Helen says it is hot in Michigan as well. So, um, so we've got soft succulent here in the shimmer vellum and let me show you the, this is the evening evergreen, the darker one. It shows up a little better if I put something behind it. And if I tilt it, you can see that shimmer. So I was playing with these and I was playing with an embossed, embossing them. Uh, my friend, Linda Dalkey from Australia um, was telling me how cool it is to emboss these, um, these vellums, uh, shimmer vellums. So I played around with that and I found something kind of magical. So I'm super excited to share that today. Um, and we are going to be once again doing another corner tuck fold card. I hope you guys are not tired of those yet. Let me grab the original ones that I did. So the original ones I did were with the uh, Shaded Summer uh, stamp set and some brand new dies. Are, this is a sneak peek of something coming next month, which the Summer Shadow dies are only going to be available for a very limited time. So stay tuned for that. Um, but I've been playing around with doing these for Christmas cards as well. Now, those of you that purchased from me in the past year, um, in the process of mailing out your new mini catalog and your new celebration brochure and, um, you're going to get a corner tuck fold card in with your on your car, uh, your catalog, which is why it's taking me a little bit longer because I have a lot of cards to stamp. So, uh, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, so let's go ahead and play. Now I've been in the last couple of videos. We did some uh, playing with the um, trimmings and tidings uh, 
tidings and trimmings, I had it backwards, tidings and trimmings uh, bundle and uh, doing some more of the corner tuck. So the corner tucks under, and there's just so much you can do with this layout. I mean, it really works for so many cards. This center piece is around three inches. You can play around with that a little bit. Um, and then I did this one. Let's see the embossing on that one. Now this is one of the, this embossing folder we're gonna play with today. It is a two pack of folders and I'll show you that in just a minute. And then we also had two more. No, one more. <laughs> that was a oh, upside down Sue. Okay, this one, which is also soft succulent. So the designer paper that we are using is actually on sale right now. Let me remember what it's called here. Do, 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 do. These are, oh my gosh, so many on sale, right? This is about to end. This ends at the end of the month. So if you haven't had a chance to double down and get your papers, do it, do it, do it. Um, Tidings of Christmas is the paper that is right here. And that was on this one. And we're playing with that one again today. Are we, Sue? Yes, we are. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to do a couple different cards, but we're going to start by, let's do some embossing first. So I'm going to bring in the mini the little mini machine. So we have a, a stamp and die cut machine, the big boss, and we have this cute little mini machine. So if you go camping in the RV or um, travel a lot, this is this adorable little thing. It's about the size. Let me see if I can show you what the size is. I don't know. It's like a little purse. It's super cute. Here's an ink pad. So it can. it's like the size of two ink pads, maybe. <laughs> So it's cute. It's little. Got my little grippy down here so that I don't slip. Or this this uh, surface I'm on is pretty slippery. So sometimes it really, really helps me out if I can put down this little grippy rug grippy and <laughs> everything is sticking to the rug grippy. Okay, there we go. So we've got our little mini and we're going to do some embossing. So let's bring out our embossing folders. These, this is a two pack. They're the winter uh, 3D embossing folders. They are a narrower folder, so they are just over. They're perfect for three inch pieces because they're a little bit over. Let's see, they're a little over three and a quarter. Hang on, can get my ruler back. My ruler's being unruly. <laughs> and then we also have a uh, two pack. Okay, so we've got the snowflakes and we've got the pine uh, needles, pine branches. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my family has a Christmas tree farm, so I'm all about the pine. Uh, this is my extended family. And so, in fact, my mom is up visiting me right now um, and has been staying all week. So I feel like I'm really shadowy here. Let's try to move back just to skosh so you can see a little bit better. There, that's a little better. So we're going to do embossing, and we're going to do embossing with these narrow 3D embossing folders, which per fit perfectly in the mini. The, the drawback with the mini is a wider emboss, a standard size embossing folder, of course, is not going to fit because you can see this one just fits. Um, and uh, large dies would not fit, but anything that is this size would fit. So it's an inexpensive way if you don't have a, a die cutting or embossing option to, uh, to try it out. Or again, if you need a kind of a travel option. So it comes with all these different plates. And we're doing 3D embossing folders. So I can see right here it says use with 3D embossing folders. So I know I want that one. This one is numbered. It's number four. And then it tells me in the little picture what else I need besides number four. So I need number one and number four to be able to do my 3D embossing folders. So here's number one right here. That's the white one. So those are the two I need. You also get a number three, and this is for standard embossing folders. So the narrow embossing folders that are standard, not the 3D. And then it tells you you also use that with number one. And of course, the cutting, pla pa la la la. cutting plates are if you are die cutting and that they are paired with this with number one as well. So number one is pretty much something you need every time. That's kind of like your bottom platform, like you would have in your big machine. And, oh, what should we do first? Oh my gosh, so many choices. Um, let's actually start by, 
decisions, decisions. Let's emboss a three inch basic white. We're just going to start with the basics here. We're going to emboss some snowflakes white on white. That seems appropriate for snow, right? And you can place your three by three paper. Uh, let see, I can't see that. Hang on, let's grab some cardstock. Slip that behind. So, oh, that didn't really help. You can strategically place, well, this is probably the best, your paper where you want it. If you want this great big snowflake right here, you can put it there. If you want this smaller one, there's all sorts of little fun swirly things, wherever you want. I'm going to pop it right over that big one. And it, this is a random folder, so you don't have to worry about your paper being perfectly straight. You just want to make sure it's not hanging out the sides. So that's going to go on our, our little picture here. So it's number one, the embossing folder with the paper in it, and then number two on top. And it does say that with the um, embossing folders, it tells us here that it, you want to insert the embossing folder hinge first. So here's the hinge. That's the, the folded part. So I want, I know I want that first and this goes on top. Now, if you ever are using your mini machine and you have trouble with it grabbing, if you slightly offset your plates just a little bit, so they're not perfectly stacked, it seems a little bit easier for the machine to grab it. If you have issues in that area, I'm going to slide everybody over so that I can um, actually crank this. So I'm just going to turn my little handle through. It's easier for me to do the standing up and I am sitting down. So let's see how that goes. I might have to stand up. So let's see what that looks like. That was with the basic white and just the snowflake embossing folder. Ooh, gorgeous, stunning, right? Look how deep that impression is. Absolutely beautiful. So let's set that aside. We're going to make that into a card. But let's also see what happens if we emboss um, this... Uh, pretty shimmer vellum. I have all sorts of different sizes here. What size should I use? I use the smaller one right here. This is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I'm, I'm kind of winging it today uh, a little bit on our cards. So we'll, we have options. We can decide which way we want it to go. So again, I'm going to go back to the number one, put my folder in there with the paper and then put number four on top and send it through this time. I'll, let me stagger it this way this time. I'll have the gray ones extending over a little bit. It doesn't matter. And again, sometimes it goes through fine when they're evenly stacked, sometimes not. So I usually just offset them just to make my life easier so I don't have to start over. All right, so we embossed some shimmer vellum with these snowflakes. Let's see what that looks like. We're gonna open it up here. And there we've got those pretty, they really pop on this thin paper that's almost plasticky. Isn't that gorgeous? And when you put some white cardstock behind it, it pops even more. But here's what I thought found that was kind of magical and super cool today when I embossed this. I accidentally flipped it over. Look at the other side. The other side, it turns white which is perfect for snowflakes. So I don't know what the right side to use is. They're both awesome. So this one is, let's put it on white here. Um, this one, you're not going to give the shimmer. You're, you're giving up the shimmer to gain um, the white. So it almost looks like it's white embossing without having to emboss. How easy is that? Um, or you, if you would prefer to have the shimmer, you can flip it over and do it that way with the shimmer up. Oh, so many good choices. You guys need to help me decide which way to go with this because um, we have two great options, right? Uh, Carol votes for the white side. Thanks for your input, Carol. There is a little delay here, by the way, um, when you comment and when I see it. So just a heads up on that. So uh, the white side is really pretty and really fun. So while we're thinking about that, Let's take a look at what this other folder, because it's a two pack. We get two for, two for the price of one here. So let's try our uh, pretty pine needles. And for that one, let's grab a piece of the Evening Evergreen Shimmer Vellum. And let's see what that looks like uh, with the pine on it. Wait, do I want to do this in Evening Evergreen? No, I think I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it in the same color just so we can compare side by side. 
so many good options, right? All right, so I'm putting my shimmer vellum in here, my folder. Um, this is a square piece, so if I decide I want to turn it, I will have that option. And with all my folders here, I need to go back and find the one that says, oops, that's standard embossing folders. I grabbed the wrong one, didn't I? 3D embossing folders, there's the winner right there. And we're going to crank this through. Again, easier for me to do this if I'm standing up, but I'm not, but we'll make it work. So let's take a look and see what the pine branches did on the vellum. I think it's easier to see if I put a piece of white behind. So this is a, a three by three piece of white and a three by three piece of vellum. So this one, I wouldn't even have a white border, but I also would have the option doing a little bit of a white border. So let's, let's grab a three and an eighth by three and an eighth piece here. So that is really pretty with the pine branches. Again, you could rotate it so they're going more side by side. Is there a re repeat design in the embossing folder? Could a larger piece be embossing twice side by side for a larger design? Um, that is a, I'm not totally sure if I understand your question. This one is um, not a repeating design. Every, I would say it is uh, unique in the different areas. Um, yeah, perfect for Minnesota, right? Lots of pines here in Minnesota. What did I do with the snowflakes? Here they are. Um, also, I think all unique. Um, if you embossed one and then slid it over embossed again, is that maybe what you're asking? I'm not sure that that would fit in the large machine, um, but something worth playing like wallpaper. Okay. With a repeating design. Um, if you emboss the, no, not really. Mm -mm. It's more of a unique pattern. Like there's no other half of this snowflake over here that it would be repeating. I think that if I'm understanding your question direct, correctly. All right. So back to our pine needles. So remember, what's going to happen on the other side. We found out with the snowflakes that the other side is going to emboss white. Let's see if the same thing happened here because pine pine boughs covered in snow are just so lovely, right? So let's flip it over and yes, exactly the same thing happened. So our pine needles on the back side of that shimmer vellum are, are look like white embossing. They're actually um What's the, how can I describe this? They're actually pressed down into the paper instead of raised up because this is the back side of the folder. Um, and that's why it turns white, which is just a super cool look. So again, super fun um, option, right? To, to do uh, white color covered pine branches. So, so many good choices. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let's pull it away and let's start playing with paper. All right. Um, I feel like we've got a good variety of things that we can come up with some pretty cute cards here. Um, actually, I think they're more than cute. They're going to be elegant. We're going for elegant today because we're working with this beautiful vellum. So let's see. I've got parts and pieces and craziness here. Um, let's start with, is this even the right, okay, this is the right color. Handy dandy paper trimmer here. So this is a piece of Sahara sand cardstock. Little pieces of paper everywhere. I don't want to drop them. Sahara sand cardstock that it started eight and a half by 11. I cut it in half the long way, four and a quarter. And we're going to grab our, our tutorial. So this PDF tutorial is uh, one that is sent out to my subscribers. If you have not subscribed for my weekly project sheets, feel free to, to do that. The um, link for that is in the description of this video. And uh, I email out project sheets. The, this week's hasn't gone out yet. It will. Uh, my mom's up visiting, so we've been busy, <laughs> but it's coming. Uh, but if you sign up for the project sheets, I've got it set up right now where you're going to get two uh, project sheets in a welcome letter when you just sign up. And this is one of them right now. So um, so no worries. You'll have that. I think there's a, I know there's a missing gap. Some people that signed up for the project sheet 
um, after this one came out and before I updated the welcome letter. So no worries. I will also have a link for it in the, the next one I'm sending out just so that in case you, in case I missed somebody. So this gives me my dimensions for this card, which we might tweak slightly, but it's the basic dimensions are what I want. So my card base is going to be four and a quarter by eight. So this is four and a quarter. We're going to cut it by eight. Let's flip the arm out here. And while I'm at it, we're going to do two cards today. We're going to do one in the, um, one in the, come on, Susan, finish your sentence. <laughs> My goodness, I get distracted today uh, in the soft succulent as well. So when I cut this off, I have this piece that's left over off the end because I only need this to be eight inches by four and a quarter. This leftover piece is three inches. So if I rotate that and cut that at three inches, that gives me this piece, which will work perfectly for my corner. I like to put a backing piece behind the uh, designer paper to make it a little bit stiffer. So I am putting my leftover, my three by three into my trimmer. Uh, I want to keep that out. And I've got it lined up here in the track. Coming up close. Woo! Point to point. So the, uh, the track is, and I know it's hard to see here, there's a little groove in there. There you can kind of see it. And that's where the blade slides. So if I put my little points perfectly lined up with that groove, it will diagonal cut this paper. Okay? And I know you couldn't see the top one there, but it's because I was so close. All right, so I've got that lined up. You can, once you close down the thing, just double check it. You might need to slide it over just a little bit. And then that is cut diagonally. This is going to make two cards, right? While I have this out, <clears throat> let's cut the right color of cardstock for our second card. Do I have the right color? Yes, this is the soft succulent, which looks very similar to mint macaron, but yet yeah, not quite the same. This is mint macaron, which is a little bit, it's lighter. This has more gray tones in it. It's going to be beautiful. So let's cut that four and a quarter. Hopefully it was at four and a quarter. Yeah, I think so. And then again, this card is going to be burned into all of your brains. Eight inches again, because I've done it so many times. But when I find a fold I like, I like to double down and, and use it a lot with different designs and patterns and uh, just having fun with it. So again, we're doing our three inch piece here. And again, we're going to rotate that and diagonal cut that. And I think I have the designer papers already to, ready to go because again, the advantage of doing this, every time you make a card, you're going to have a second triangle and a second designer paper. We'll see. We'll have the trimmer close by if we need it. Oh, you know, before I put it away, I better score these. So back to our sheet here, it's four and a quarter by eight. And then we want to score it at two and a half inches for the card base. So let's do that. We don't want the trimming blade for this one. We want the light gray one. Uh, what did I say? Um, score at two and a half, right? Yes, two and a half. Always better to look at the directions twice and score once, right? Instead of doing it wrong. So we've got our crease there. Can you see it? The same here. Carol says she found it on page 152 of the catalog. Is that the embossing folders, Carol? That sounds about right. That sounds like the back of the catalog where all the fun is. I love the stamp sets, but oh my gosh, I love the accessories. Because <laughs> that's what makes your cards fun, right? All those accessories. All right. And yes, these are in the annual, everything I'm using today so far is in the annual catalog. If I show any sneak peeks, I'll let you know, but I think everything is available right now. So let's go ahead and crease this while we're at it. While we got the bone folder in play, what the heck, let's do this one too. Doing double cards today. Woohoo! You know what my secret plan is here, right? You figured it out that the more Christmas cards I demo now, the more I'll have ready <laughs> for this fall when I want to send out Christmas cards. All right, let's bring in some designer paper. So again, we are playing with, oh goodness, it's all 
tumbly here. <laughs> We're playing with this paper, which is the Tidings of Christmas designer series paper on sale just for one more week. Add it to your stash. All right. I lied. I thought I had an extra, I, I would, I should have an extra triangle. So, oh, I do. Look, it's right there. Because <laughs> I was going to say, wait, I already started a card with this. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let's bring in our multi-purpose liquid glue here. And we're going to glue this together. So my, my, my goal here is to reinforce the designer paper because when it's a corner and it's having things tucked under it, um, needs to be a little bit stronger than just a lightweight designer paper. So I am backing it with a piece of cardstock to make it stronger and to hold up better. So I've got that glued on. I like the liquid glue for this because I can get down in the corners and the angles. Um, let's do the same while we're at it. We're doing double cards here. I I'm, hope that's not confusing for you. It's a little easier for me to kind of batch them together by uh, doing the same step at the same time with... The different colors. Maybe I should be going from step one all the way through on each card, but we'll try it this way. Again, lining that up. And now we have this piece backed. Okay, excellent. All right, which one should we do first? Um, let's do this one first because it's no, let's, I'm changing my mind. Oh my gosh, so many choices. And then I'm going to adhere this. Now I could use the multi-purpose glue for this. That would be just fine. Um, you can also use a tape runner like our seal here or the seal plus. For the seal, I like, oops, I have two pieces there. Only one. I like to twist it at the end. Like I'm doing a little pirouette. I'll show you here. And that just breaks off the strings. So um, that works best for me. Oh, it's so sticky. Look how sticky. So this is a one inch by four inch piece. Again, let's go back to our paper here. This was a different designer paper, but one by four is what we're using here. And then we did a three by three cut on the diagonal for our corner. And we're going to just put that on right there. And this we want to pop up. I don't want to adhere this on. I want to pop it up. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy dimensionals. I want three for this. And if you have little edge pieces left over, those would work just as well. If you have minis, those would work as well. But you do want to get it pretty close into the corners so that you have enough room to tuck in your piece. You don't want to put one here or you're not going to be able to tuck in your little uh, point. That'll make more sense in a second here. All right, so let's, now I do have to stand up or I will never get this straight. So much better if I'm looking down on it. All right, so there we've got it. It's raised up so that it's gonna be able to be easily tuckable. And let's bring in our embossed, somewhere in this pile of stuff, <laughs> we did um, our snowflake embossing just on white, that very first card. And we're going to put this on right here. Um, do I want... La, 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 la. I think I'm just going to go straight up on this one and I'm not going to back it. Let's try that. Um, so I'm just going to adhere this, this panel right here on the side. You could do a layer here. I do love layers. I use them a lot. I'm not going to do a layer right now because I don't want to take the time to cut one. And so that is just going to tuck right under there to hold the card closed. Okay. And then we're going to do a greeting here. We're going to use the, once again, that tidying and trimmings stamp set has a really cute Noel in it. Um, we're going to grab that. This one would be really fun for New Year's actually. Cheers from our home to yours. One of the options I put on the survey over in my Sue Stanfield group today was um, when do you send out your, when do you start your Christmas cards? And I, some people, you know what, some people don't start them until um after christmas and they send them as new year's cards and the fun thing about new year's cards is new, the year is a long time so <laughs> you can really send those anytime you know maybe you want to do sometime in january but um, i'm going to ink up the word noel here in 
Sahara Sand, which is the color that I'm using because that's the color in the designer paper that I used, which is, has kind of a snowflake pattern that matches our snowflakes. And then that can be popped right here. Now I'm going to add a little sparkle behind that. And that is with the gold here. So this is um, some uh, metallic shimmer gold that we have in the catalog. I'm going to layer this so just a teensy bit shows behind. You could do a bigger piece if you want. Um, it's, it's beautiful. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera as beautiful as it is, but it is a stunner. Put a little adhesive on the back of that. The word Noel is, I forgot to tell you the dimensions. Oops, sorry, forgot this piece is the same length. Normally I would probably do it so it's a little bit bigger, but I didn't. And I'm gonna, this was actually a scrap I already had that was cut, so I'm using what I already have. Just gonna give me a little hint of gold right behind. And then uh, this paper, I was gonna give you the dimensions for that. I believe it is. 5 eighths, yes, 5 eighths wide by one and a half inches. Leave my ruler out. Problem with leaving my ruler out is I forget to put it away and then I can't find it because my desk makes it disappear. <laughs> and we're just gonna pop our word Noel right here in the corner. You can put it wherever you want to not cover up your snowflakes. Just remember to leave that part open and then I like ribbon. Does anyone else out there like ribbon? Because I really like ribbon. Let's see what this ribbon looks like on it. Um, this is the fine art ribbon that was in the uh, spring mini that carried over. And it's um, it's kind of Sahara sand. Let's see if I can trick my camera to focusing. Sahara sand with a gold thread going through it. So I thought it might be perfect for this card. And so we're just going to wrap that around and tie it. Now, next, we're going to do our soft succulent version of a card using an embossed. And that one, we're going to use our vellums that we've been playing with here. So hang with me, guys. We're doing a twofer today. <laughs> um, now, I do have a blog post up uh, featuring the cards that I made previously um, using these embossing folders. My blog is suestampfield.com. And I just got it redone. Well, it's in process of being redone, actually. And it went live yesterday with the new blog header. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Um, I, uh, I haven't even had a chance to really play much with it. Um, got some great people that have been working on it for me. And there we have our card. Of course, we're going to want to put an inside greeting somewhere in this big old stack of papers I have. I have an inside message. Oh, let's just go with this one because it's super, super nice saying. Um, there's some nice one. There's several nice ones in this set. I'm going to put it near the top so I have room to sign. Um, it's the most wonderful time of the year. There's also this one that says, uh, wishing you a wonderful, a joyful Christmas and a happy new year. Also a good choice. So... Put this on here, a little white, a little gold, a nice, pretty neutral. Great option for Christmas, making sure that I've got that covered up. So I just lightly set it in there about center, and then I just checked it to make sure it wasn't going to show from uh, when the card was closed. And let's press that down. So we're going to tuck that back under. So Connie, thanks for looking that up. Connie's telling us that these embossing folders are in the annual catalog on page 152. I appreciate that. So let me know your thoughts on this card. Let's move on to the second card. And we already have our reinforced corner because we double dipped and we did that um, the same time we were doing the other one. We're going to do the same method here with the dimensionals in each corner and pull off these backing pieces and now we're going to play with that pretty pretty vellum all right so i'm going to pop this right in here and somewhere i have a one inch by four inch piece for the edge there it is right there let's 
I'm standing up now. I can't see anything on my desk because I have a phone stand holding my phone so I can film this and light so you can see. All right, there we go. So for our vellum, I do want to put white behind it. Um, this one is 3 8 by 3 8 So this is nice with the pine branches because that's what we have over here, our pine branches. That is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and just stamp our word Noel here. So I'm going to close up my Sahara sand because we have switched over to the soft succulent color family here, color card. And I'm going to clean my stamp because this one has the hair sand on it and that's not gonna work. Sorry, get my phone stand there. So I've got my cleanup pad here, my Stampin' Mist. Give that a little scrub. And I'm ready to switch colors now. So we've got the word Noel right there. And it's even almost kind of straight. And this word is curvy, so it's easier to mask if it's not straight. I didn't clean this one. So for this card, let's use this other greeting. You can see what that will look like. This one I can put more in the center because it's smaller. I've got room to stamp. Now, we don't want just a plain greeting on this one. The other one is a fancy greeting. It was fine on its own. But this one I need to add a little bit of fanciness to. If anybody can see what I did with my little grid paper that I had laid out, that would be awesome. Oh, here it is. Found it. It's hiding under instructions. Let's add a little, little, this little sprig from the stamp set that where the greetings were from, the uh, trimmings and tidings. Just add a little something, something there in the corners, right? Get more fun. All right. So now I need your decisions here. Uh, Colleen's letting us know the all the embossing folders are on 154 and 155, and the cut and emboss machines are shown on 152 and 153. Thank you so much. All right. So that's going to go inside. This time, let's try putting this inside first. That might make it even easier to make sure it's covered up because you can look when you um, put the other one on and you'll know whether it's covered up. Now I'm standing up again because I want to center this approximately. All right, so now I know what area I need to cover up. And here are our options. This is where I need you to vote. <laughs> this is a 3 8 by 3 8 piece of basic white. These squares can be adjusted however you want. I have done up to three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Any bigger, it's going to be really hard to tuck it. And the bigger the get you get, the closer you want to go to this piece over here. So we can do this side. With remember, we'll have our little Noel on here. And oh, hang around at the end because I did play around with embossing some of this metallic paper too. So remind me, I want to show you that too at the end. Um, okay, so we have uh, we have our, our we have this option, which is lovely. Of course, we're going to add some ribbon here. Let's see what it looks like with the pines covered in snow. Just going to flip that piece over, pop that on there. That's really pretty, you guys. Just saying with the white side up pops a lot more doesn't it thinking that's the winner but I'd love your thoughts um, Ellen said she just ordered these embossing folders because they are so beautiful they really are beautiful um, so it, there is a delay here uh, it might take me a while to see your comments so give me a vote if you want the uh, the snowy side up <laughs> or the other side now we could change it up too because we did we did some snowflake um, options over here this is a slightly smaller piece I believe this is two and three quarters by two and three quarters so let me uh, dial it back here to a three by three let's see what the snowflakes look like two and three quarters on a three by three um, that's the shimmery side very pretty and this is the snowflake side, the back side that's not shimmery, but it gives you that embossed look. Oh my gosh, how gorgeous is that, right? Pop our little Noel in here. 
Oh, you guys, so pretty. So many fun choices. So snow side up, uh, right way up, white side, white side. Okay, we have some boats for both, which is option, uh, which is great. I love that. Um, so we're going to go with the snowy side up. But I also have, um, let's do the pines, uh, snowy side up. And then let's do, yep, I will, um, I will create the other version. I thought I had another, um, I do have snowflakes here done both ways. Um, so on that one, I could do them both ways, but I will, I'll post an option both ways, right? So you can see what the finished one, and it's your card. So, right, when you're making it, you can pick however you want to do it. Let's go ahead and try this one with the pines, just because they match so nicely. And I really like pines. So let's try it this way. Um, now with adhering vellum, when you're using the regular vellum that's totally see-through, adhesive can be a bit of a struggle because um, you, you liquid glue is your best bet so that it doesn't show. With the colored vellum, it doesn't show, the adhesive doesn't show, so you can go either. But when I emboss it, I don't know if you can see this, when you emboss it, it does get a little, um, a little it warps the paper a little bit because it's a very thin paper. So I don't want it to be lumpy. I'd either have to put a lot of adhesive on it or, um, or we can go with the liquid glue. So let's just go with the liquid glue. I am going to glue the shimmer side down. You do want to stop and think here <laughs> uh, that you've got the right, you're putting the glue on the right, on the back side, whatever you decide the back side to be. Um, and I'm just putting some all over, but a very light amount. So it won't, hopefully won't ooze out the sides. All right. Especially since I'm putting the white side up, this is actually the raised up side. So um, the white side again is kind of the uh, debossed side, the pressed in side, if you will. And pressing that down. The, the liquid glue also gives me the the wiggle room a little bit before I um, I stick it down. I can lift it back up right away to move it around if I need to. So we're going to go ahead and adhere our beautiful white embossed pines. Didn't have to get out the white embossing powder. I didn't have to fire up the heat gun. All I had to do was send it through the machine. So this is our lazy button embossing, which is fun. And don't worry, I'm going to put a ribbon on this because that's how I roll. I, I'm trying to trying to pull back and not throw on any gems, but it's a struggle. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no to a few rhinestones on here to really make it sparkle. All right, let's grab our soft succulent ribbon. This is so gorgeous. This is just gonna it's just gonna be the final touch, you guys. This is gonna make our card. And hang with me for just a few minutes. I want to show you that um, embossed metallic gold paper because it was quite lovely as well. And I'm not going to do a whole card with it. I'll just show you the piece and I'm going to lay it on this other card we made so that we can kind of see what that would look like. All right. There is our ribbon. There is our card. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm pulling the ribbon away before I even cut it all the way. So we've got our ribbon scissors here that are not allowed to touch paper ever. And there we have our card with that debossed. Of course, you would do an inside message. Did we do an inside message? Oh, we did already. That's right. We put it on first. How cool is that? It's already done. So there is the debossed pines. There is the regular embossed on white with the Sahara sand. Opens up like that. Tucks under like that. And then we also could have done I mean that would be so pretty too you guys is the shimmery side uh, with the pines and then let's bring in this other one that I was playing with this is that metallic gold paper that I used for uh, behind the Noel here and I embossed it with the snowflakes so you could put that on here instead. You could even put a, let's see if I have a piece to go behind that. 
put a little white border behind a three eight by three eighths behind. If you want to dial up the elegance, dial up the gold. And then you could put your Noel on right. Just happened to have a Noel with a dimensional on it already. How cool is that? Um, and you know, that would be gorgeous too. I want to make them all. Boy, the people on my Christmas card list are going to get a real variety this year because they're just so many fun, gorgeous options. So thank you so much today for joining me. And um, as we had fun with these embossing, beautiful embossing folders and the vellum, please hit subscribe to my channel if you'd like to join me in it for our next video. And remember to subscribe to the weekly project sheets so that you are getting those in the mail. Hey, I do have another one here. Let's see what this looked like. This is what it would have looked like with the uh, shimmer side up, which is, oh my gosh, that is beautiful too, Nancy Booth. You are right. I agree with you. Totally gorgeous. All right. Let me flip around the cameras here so I can say farewell. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. I hope you have a great Saturday. Stay cool and uh, maybe play with some snowflakes. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.